All right, guys, today we're going to do a video that I've done in the past, but I think is worth revisiting, you know, periodically as things change, get updated, and overall just progress forward. So today we're going to talk about the best hiking knives that you can buy in 2023. And I'm sure that my opinions are always subject to change as they tend to be, but these are going to be the top three folders and fixed blades. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it with the first fixed blade. So for me, the first one that I wanted to go with for a fixed blade was the Mora Eldris. Now the Eldris, I think I've gotten like comments in the past about like, oh, that's way too small. It's not useful. But to be honest, I think there's a great deal of hikers, especially hikers that, you know, hike around in reasonably, uh, how do I put it, like civilized areas. Like this would not be my take for Alaska, but if you're hiking reasonably civilized areas, nothing too crazy, and you're literally just using your knife to either strike a ferro rod to start you know your isobutane um little stove or you're using this to you know open up your like mres or mountain house meals like if that's what you're using a knife for honestly i think the eldris is pretty darn good like this is obviously not going to be heavy duty robust and like a hard use type knife though you can beat the heck out of these things um so i i like the eldris a lot but i think like for that kind of compact and light use case the eldris makes a lot of sense because one you can throw it around your neck wear it easily or two you can throw this in a pack and totally forget about it in addition to as it jumps out of my hand it's in 12 c 27 and sandvik steel so this guy is going to be super rust resistant so you don't really have to worry about this thing like rusting over and uh yeah so it's pretty overall easy to maintain easy to care for and just like kind of fire and forget so that's why it's my first one up for hiking specifically now the next one i would say and if you're stepping into a place that's you know once again a little less civilized a little bit more kind of off the grid i would say the se3 is one that you're gonna be hard pressed to not like because the se3 is a really really solid knife like it is thin it is very thin overall but at the same time too it's super robust of course it is a full tang you can beat the absolute heck out of these things and in addition to what's pretty cool about the se3s is there are options or variants to go with cpm s35 vn so you can get more rust resistant versions of this knife now i will say as a note to those they are less durable so you know you could snap the tip more easily on the stainless versions but as far as it goes if you need durability the 1095 is probably the option to go with but if you're looking for something that's better with corrosion resistance the uh, ones in stainless or cpm s35 vn are probably the move either way though the sc3 is a really robust and really well-rounded knife for you know being still reasonably compact reasonably small and reasonably lightweight now, probably the biggest thing I would choose for hiking, to be honest, unless we're going like full on survival knives here, is gonna be the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. And this would probably be my personal choice because it's just a little bit thicker, it's a little bit more robust, and it's one of those knives that I personally know I can do just about anything in the wilderness with this knife. Like there's just about, there's really nothing uh, that stands in my way when I have a BRK Bushcrafter and a few other tools. But the BRK Bushcrafter, definitely is a really, really solid tool. So I like it. It's made out of CPM uh, 3V, so it's not the most rust resistant, but CPM 3V, if you know anything about steel, is one of the toughest steels out there. And that's why I really like it because it can take an absolute pounding and still hold a decent edge. It's obviously not gonna be like hair whittling, but it, it can take an absolute pounding. So those would be my top three suggestions for fixed blades. Are there other things out there that work well? Sure. The LT Wright Legome would be another excellent choice. Um, as far as lightweight goes, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'd probably go with something like a Cons Bull. Um, even a Condor Pterosaur would be a good option option as well so those are a little bit more budget oriented but honestly the eldris is like what 40 bucks or something 30 bucks it's not terribly expensive um and once again you're getting a thing uh, a knife that's going to be able to handle most realistic hiker situations all right, so now let's jump over into the land of folding knives. Now, the folding knives are not going to be as exciting, but the first one for me is the Formax Scout. And the Formax Scout has to be on this list because while I probably would not take this guy, like this would not be my initial choice 
for hiking. I know a ton of hikers. And whenever I post videos about the 4MAX, like I'm, here, I'm here to tell you, if you go to the comment section below, you'll probably see plenty of comments saying like, I'm a hiker, I hike in this place, and I carry a 4MAX scout. Like these things are synonymous with hikers. And I think it's because there's a really good um, balance between like toughness and compactability and like just overall this thing is carryable but it's also super super tough and really overbuilt now of course it is built off the back of the triad lock so you guys can see there and this is not one of the thinner triad locks <clears throat> this is one of the thicker triad locks so this thing can take an absolute beating and it's still absolutely carry on and i have beaten the heck out of mine it is a tank and so that is a really big pro to it however i will say this is definitely this this is probably like the heaviest knife of this whole list. However, the nice thing is, once again, if you're throwing this in a backpack, you can throw this in a backpack, it's super compact, and it's not gonna take up that much space. So depending on what you need, if you need something a little bit tougher for your folding knife, this is a very good option. In addition to, I always like to point out, this is the Taiwanese version, but there is an Italian and an American made version of these. I believe they are discontinued, but they are still out there. They are harder to find and more expensive, but you can get this in CPM 3V, the American version of this, which I believe has a tan handle. Um, and that guy, I mean, like this thing in 3V is pretty much unstoppable. Like if I had a 3V version of this, I might honestly just carry that around when hiking because like there's nothing this can't do in CPM 3V. All right, so that's the first one. Like I said, it, that's like a really tanky, robust, overbuilt blade. Um, and it's honestly not that expensive. They go on sale pretty regularly for like 60 bucks, at least the OS 10 Taiwanese version that you see there. So it's really a pretty decent option. Now, the next two are going to lean towards the opposite side, definitely leaning more towards that kind of Mora Eldris style of blade. So these are gonna be lightweight options that are going to prioritize like that lightweight and compactability. So the first one for me is the Hogue Deca. And the Hogue Deca for me is a really solid choice because honestly, like before this year, I probably would have said, go with the Benchmade Bug Out. But the Hogue Deca, in my opinion, is just a better knife because the Hogue Deca uses magna cut steel and if you keep the stock handles on this thing it literally weighs nothing like this is a sub two ounce knife so if you're really one of those people that once again is just opening mountain house meals just you know doing like the typical hiker kind of um use need for a knife then honestly like the deck is going to be there for you you're going to be able to do everything you need and then on top of that too that magna cut steel is not only going to hold an edge well but is super super stainless so it really doesn't matter if you expose it or it gets exposed to moisture humidity or water like this thing is going to be rust proof so um anyways the hogue deca is the one i think like the lightest on the list and is a super super lightweight knife and the nice thing is I'm not the largest fan of these ultralight knives but the cool thing is it still does have decent ergonomics like I have like a medium-sized hand and I can comfortably hold this knife without any problems right so if you will have large XL you know hands it's gonna be a little bit small for you but still for its weight and for its size you're still getting a lot of usable blade length and a usable knife as a whole so that is the Hogue Deca. Now the last one up for me is a knife that is not as light as the Deca, but I think is just a slightly more well-rounded knife. And that is going to be the TRM Neutron V2. Now, like I said, this one's a little bit more heavy because this is a liner lock. So you have full metal liners and, uh, yeah, so you do have to balance that. But as far as it goes, like this thing is still incredibly lightweight. I believe it's around like three to four ounces. So it is not heavy at all. Uh, I want to say it's leaning more towards like three ounces. But yeah, this thing is super, super slicey. They come in CPM 20 CV. So still a very high end steel, very usable, very useful. But uh, the thing that I like more about the TRM Neutron than the Hogue Deca is even though it's heavier because it has those full metal liners it is slightly thinner hopefully you guys can see there it is slightly thinner than the deca so if you're really going for something that's going to be very pocket friendly like if you're wanting to put this in a pocket like a true pocket knife this is probably the way i would go because it is so slim so thin and honestly like a very very small package but yet still once again 
still pretty hand filling. You can get a full hand grip on it. And uh, yeah, so it's very slicey, very thin and super compact. So for me, by and large, when it comes to folders, I tend to lean towards more ease of carry when it comes to folders, as opposed to fixed blades, I tend to go with a little bit more robust, heavier, because I want to be able to hard use them. Like these um, are not hard use. Uh, you know, they're going to be for more conventional tasks. Anyways, hopefully this gives you guys at least an idea of good hiking knives. Once again, things that would also be, you know, honorable mentions for folding knives. Uh, things like the Benchmade Mini Grip series, things like the 556, 557, 555 um, are going to be really good. Things like the Bug Out are going to be decent. The Paramilitary 3, the Paramilitary 2, um, even the Manix 2, I'd say, might be pushing it but that's going to be a decent option. Once again, there's tons of good options out there. These are just the ones that I think are the best in my collection and uh, ones that I would be most likely to carry for hiking. And some of them, like, I honestly do carry. Like, I, I carry this when I hike. Like, genuinely, the TRM Neutron, I genuinely carry um, the BRK Bushcrafter. I genuinely carry, like, a lot of these I do genuinely carry. About the only one I don't really genuinely carry is this guy, though I do want to throw the Formax Scout on the list because, like, so many people sound off in the comments. They're like, I'm an extreme backpacker and that's what I choose. So that's why I wanted to throw the Formax Scout in here because I get a lot of feedback from my subscribers um, and I can definitely see how it would be a good backpacking slash hiking knife. Um, yeah. So anyways, guys, that is a long story short. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.